Hey, this is Doug Side of Rose for Game Shampoo, and today we're going over the quest Cleansing the Stones. This is available once you talk with Strom, not Strom, Craig Strider at the end of the Fate of the Skull. This quest is honestly concurrent with the Path of Knowledge. Both these quests will be active, and to complete the Path of Knowledge, you do need to complete Cleansing the Stones. So, um, it works that way because at a particular point in the Path of Knowledge, you need to come back to Storm, well, Crag Strider, and ask him to share some knowledge that a Daedric Prince, Haramora, oh, Haramora, as they call him, wants. The problem is, <coughs> unless... As you've cleansed all the stones, he's not going to feel the connection with the oneness provided by the Allmaker, I suppose. I haven't delved too deep into that. Is too weak, and he doesn't feel confident he'd be able to enforce things. So, do this, and he will want you uh, to unbind all the stones. So... Honestly, there is no particular order. I simply decided, alright, let's start at the Temple of Marak and go to the nearby stone there. You honestly don't need to get as close as I do here. There was just uh, an interesting little glitch or something going on with the cultist at the beast stone. So, when in doubt, kill the thing causing the trouble. The cultist will be there regardless. He is going to be aggressive against you. All of those enthralled aren't going to hurt you, they're just going to run away. Okay, so... Deal with said cultist. Then go ahead and use the bend will shout on the stone itself. I just gotta put away the ebony blade. And then see what's up with this reckling and grab some nightshade, because nightshade is important. Plus move stuff. So, yeah. Don't need to move back. All you have to do is be there. Use the shout on stone. Now, the main reason why I'm actually using the ebony blade is I found I was having trouble registering hits when up against lurkers previously with just my fist. The extra reach of a two-handed weapon made sure I was able to consistently hit. Mind you, since I've just been brawling, my two-handed weapon skill is basically nothing. But, can also say, if you want an easy time of this, get the Ebony Blade. This is just base, I haven't powered it up at all. And attack. A lot. And I do mean a lot. Most of these stones are only going to have one lurker. There is an exception, I will point it out when we get there. But, yeah, just get in there, fight the lurker. Be very aggressive if you're in melee range. If you work more at a distance, keep that distance. It is not going to be easy to maintain, though. They really do push for... yeah. Yeah, the lurker tries to close the distance and make sure that you are in melee. Well, I also can just sit around and be distracted by others. Talk with the Recklings, out of curiosity. So, and yeah, collect some more alchemical ingredients. Next! Alright, onwards to the next one, which is the Water Stone. Now, this one is a ways, and as I have stated many times, I do not believe in making people watch me at a regular pace going from point A to point B. So, while I need to go from point A to point B, I will summon a horse. This is a mod that I'm using called the, you know, Conjure Ethereal Horse. But honestly, the path remains valid. Head straight across the west, and eventually you will find the water stuff. Uh, also, following the path I did, you can come across some reckling warriors, and yeah, it takes a moment to kill them. However, you do find something which can be useful for another quest. That's the only reason this really made the cut. You come across 
the East Empire pendant if you can crack this. No, it's expert level, so... Uh, without... Not much lockpicking. I mean, it can be done, especially if you get lucky. I did. So, Waterstone, approach it. Use the bend will shout. Wait for the breakage. And you have another lurker. Once again, get in there, mix it up. Power attacks seem to work really well. This one, I do fight with just my fist, and it works. Though it does remain... Brawling this fight is much more difficult. Now, if you've got stuff that, you know, saps health from your foes, you know, like the Nightingale Blade or just absorb health enchantments, bring them on. That's all I gotta say. Bring them for these fights if you're a brawler. They help a lot. Alright, collect the goods. Then... Ah, <sighs> then I had the unfortunate luck of encountering a dragon. There's no guarantee you will find one in this stretch, but there's always a chance. The annoying part about dragons is, you know, when you like to just get in there and punch things, you know, I need to fight at it. Now I find a melee. That means I need to actually go ranged. All right. Now, at the end, I am hit by another bit of unfortunate luck. Mirok, Mirok shows up and siphons this dragon soul, which I was kind of planning to take. So, note. Mirok, once you have encountered him, now, once you've come to Soul's theme, there is a 25% chance he will show up and absorb the soul of any dragon you kill. And I mean any. You can go to Skyrim. Wander around, kill like four dragons. He will take one of their souls. Pretty much guaranteed. Because 25% chance he will show up and grab the soul. Alright, with that, it's time to head to the next one. And this one, well, this time I go for the Earth Stone, which is by Raven Rock. And since I needed to come here earlier, I already had it marked so I could just fast travel. Grab some goods, and then head to the location. This is the exception for the all mark uh, <laughs> all maker stones. This one actually spawns two lurkers. One is going to spawn in the immediate area out of the pool of water around the stone. The other actually spawns closer or to the coast. So once again, get in there, mix it up with them, beat them up. Mind you, this does take a while, cause, uh, fist, and my enchanting wasn't as high as it could be when I made the gauntlets I'm using. But, I'm killing a couple dragons now, so I likely have the materials to upgrade and improve my gauntlets. Well, the enchantment on them. Alright, so yeah, just... The Ebony Blade makes this very simple, even at its base level, just be mindful of using power attacks so you can just keep on swinging. The Ebony Blade is unique in that it siphons health per hit and it has no charge. You can do, you can attack infinitely without having to refill it. Now, now, just killing one lurker is enough. The problem I have is it's attacking people I kind of care about in that they could be quest related. I can't kill them just yet with the Ebony Blade because they need the like mate. Then I can kill them with the Ebony Blade. And, uh, yeah, this Khajiit will probably do that. We'll see if that shows up in another video later. It wouldn't be, well, it'd be pretty difficult. I Honestly, consult our wiki orcs for the Ebony Blade. It gives you a very complete breakdown of where and who you can kill to enhance it. Alright. So, that was stone 3 of 4. Now there's just one more stone that needs to be obtained. Well, cleansed. That one, unfortunately is on the eastern side of the island, pretty much opposite where I am. But, thanks to the magic of editing, and my ethereal horse, we'll be there pretty quick. Ran a save, just to be on the safe side. Always annoying when that happens, don't see the proper one. 
All right, heading this way does carry its own risk. You can encounter the scorpions. There are two mages fighting. Do not cross their paths. They will kill you. Well, unless you get the drop on them. Okay, so go to the stone. Use the voice. Ah, use the shout, bend will to cleanse it. And be ready for the final one. Yeah, change that. Take that off. Because that way I can punch with two hands against this slurker. I know I mostly attack with one, but still. It's a thing. But yeah, as before, get in there. Fight hard, fight well. Do the Scald and Nord's proud, if nothing else. And you are fighting to clear their stuff. I will say, if you are a brawler, do what I did. Bring lots of potions, because it can be a kind of rough being right in there fighting. No, this character is only in their 30s. And while most of the time would help plenty, and I'm still working on getting all the perks I need properly aligned. A couple more are needed in heavy armor and incidentally one-handed because that's where, uh, yeah, that is where you get the other things. All right, once you have finished off the last lurker, that will honestly complete the quest. Loot its body if you so desire and then you will get the prompt. So this has been Doug Zyder Rose for Game Shampoo. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date on all our Skyrim coverage and our LPs. Cheers.